Hi everyone, I'm Chevelli. I'm a board certified anesthesiologist assistant and today I want to get into AA schooling. So I want to get into didactics and in another video I'll cover clinicals. So if you've gotten to this point in your AA journey, congratulations, you have gotten into AA school which is awesome. As of right now there are a couple of different programs and there's 14 sites overall. So Nova has four sites and there's rumors of opening up another site. Case Western has four sites, South University has two sites with rumors of opening up one more site. There's also MCW, Indiana, Colorado, and Emory. So a couple of different programs to look forward to. So again, if you've gotten to this point, congratulations. I believe a lot of schools want you to review and memorize a medical drug sheet. So I would get on top of that in preparation for school. And some schools may want you to learn a med term sheet. So in my experience, I had that. I got into school, I was so excited. And then I learned that I have to learn this material and I would have a quiz on these two materials in my first week. If you're going through this experience, I would say just focus on those things. Those are the first tests and quizzes that you'll have. So it's always nice to start on a good foot and feel that momentum and that confidence of doing well in those. So, you know, just focus on the medical terms and on the drug sheets if that's applicable to your experience. Now, if you're someone that is very anxious and wants to get a, an edge on things, I would say you probably don't have that much time to do that and you will have enough time during school. If you do want to learn some background information, I'm going to leave an anesthesia YouTube account down below and an anesthesia Instagram account down below. I don't think that people should be worrying themselves too much about the schooling yet. And the school will be so much and it'll encompass so much of your life. So just surround yourself with family, take a nice break. If you can afford to take a vacation, take that vacation. I personally could not. <laughs> so I just studied for the anesthesia drug sheet and I surrounded myself with family. I worked out. I studied with one of my classmates who had gotten into school at the same time as me. He was in my interview group and we would study back and forth and eventually he became in my study group. So that was all I did. I didn't have that much time between getting in and starting. So, you know, other people might have a different experience, but again, take it easy. You will learn enough and it will become so much of your life soon enough. So overall, you'll be covering the following topics. You'll be covering instrumentation and monitoring. You'll be covering pharmacology, a couple of different pharmacology semesters, physiology, multiple semesters on that, anatomy, uh, ACLS and P PLS, PAL, airways, a couple of different airway semesters, EKG, you'll be learning simulation lab you might have a master's level literature course that's what i had to go through as well like i had to write an essay and proposal for one of my classes for my first semester i took anatomy and physiology with a couple of other graduate programs i took it alongside pas pts and ot's which was awesome besides that my first semester i had intro to anesthesia ekg a respiratory course um, i had a simulation lab and it was very busy my study style is flashcards so for me i would usually wake up around nine and then i would study until about 11 p.m you know obviously i was eating sometimes i had class during the week i had an hour or so of didactics at least a couple like maybe four times a week and sometimes i had anatomy lab or simulation some days were longer than others so for me i did my flashcards i did anki i believe anki is a great tool to have because it's flashcards it's very similar to quizlet but with anki you have to assess your comfort level with the material so if you say that you're not comfortable with something or you don't remember something anki will with its algorithm will bring it back to your attention more times than if you were comfortable with material so i did a lot of anki i would say to stay healthy and keep getting your seven to eight hours of sleep keep getting exercise in your week and taking a break because for me personally i did so much studying during the semester that by the time it was around finals i was always very burnt out and i didn't study a lot for my finals but at the same time because i studied so much during the semester i I didn't have to study as, as much during the final period, but keep good habits. There's no point in burning yourself out. This is a marathon and there's a lot of material to learn and a lot of time, a lot, of, a lot ahead. So just keep good, healthy habits. So for my first semester, it was a lot of healthcare materials and I felt like it was peripheral healthcare material as well. But then my second semester, it really dived deep into anesthesia itself. And for that semester, I would say I had a quiz or a midterm or a couple of them every single week. Some, at least every, I had at least one quiz every week. And then on some weeks I would have multiple midterms back to back. So prepare for a second semester to be brutal and really the learning curve to be extremely steep. Besides didactics for your first year, you'll be getting into clinicals. Case Western is known to put their students into clinicals their first semester. South University will put in students their second semester and Nova will put in students their third semester. So there's pros and cons for each of them. Go into clinicals earlier. You might get more acclimated with the OR environment, which will be nice. And you might feel more comfortable by the time you're in your second year and you're fully in clinicals. Now, if you go into clinicals a little bit later, it might be nice because now you have a background kind of information of what you're pushing and what effects it'll have and, you know, everything that you're seeing in the OR. So they're both valuable. And at the end of both of those programs, people are ready to become anesthesia providers. So there's a lot that you can look into in terms of your decision into which schools to go into. I have a couple tips going into school. Well, number one is your health, of course. So get your eight hours of sleep, get your exercise in, 20 minutes of walking at least, good sleep, and make sure you're still eating healthy. It doesn't make sense to burn yourself out and it's not effective for your learning. My room 
roommate was actually, I think the second highest in the class and he got eight hours of sleep religiously. I personally did not, I would cram and I feel like it just takes a toll on your mental health and your health overall. So, and I still did well, but there's a phenomenon. If you give yourself 10 hours to do something or like five hours to do something, you will do the same amount of work in those different hours. So keep a good routine and keep good habits for your own benefit. I suggest getting a good study group to keep yourself accountable. In my experience, I didn't um, study by thinking ideas out loud and going back and forth on them. I don't find that to be the most effective way for me to learn. I did flashcards. However, I had my study group because we all kept each other accountable. And even though we weren't studying at the same time, saying things out loud, we all knew we would be in the same area or we knew that the other person was studying a certain subject and that kept us accountable. I feel like it's such a hard program to go through without having someone to do that. And I know that there are some people that can you know, study on their own, but I do think it's just great to have a study group that you can trust and rely on through the program. My other tip is to reach out to upperclassmen and see if they have specific tips for a class that you're struggling on. So in my program, I was assigned a big and I reached out to her over the experience overall and she would reassure me or give me tips on certain classes on how to study best for it. So I felt like that was a great thing. Besides my big, I had other people that I reached out to and would break down certain classes and give me tips. It never hurts to have a good network and to know people to just ask questions to. So if you get a chance to meet your upperclassmen, just see if they have any insight on how to get through this very rigorous program. My last tip is to look for Quizlets that have been made by people that have gone through the program. Hopefully you're not the first cohort, and if you are, maybe you're sharing a certain professor with the other cohorts. Possibly you can look through Quizlet and see if there has been something made already, because that will save you so much time. One of my main classes was Farm, and she made her own PowerPoint, so I would make my own flashcards to her PowerPoints because she was teaching this class for the first time, so it differed from other previous years. So in that case, I didn't have that advantage, but in almost every other class, I had the opportunity to have Quizlets made before, and I would go through those and do Anki through them and really reinforce that information. I hope that this video was useful to anyone that's coming into the program or people that want to have some insight on what the first year is like. Clinicals is a big part of your first year as well, and I'll go into clinicals and you know tips for success on that later, but for now I, I just want to cover didactics and some of the basics and what you can expect for that experience. So. If you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you have any tips, if you are a previous student or someone that's graduated, and if you have a tip that you would wanna leave for someone, please leave that down below. If you have any other questions, please leave that down below as well. And I'll catch you next week, so.